tried to uh, pray for by the disciples and nothing happened. And Jesus begins to get mad. He says, man, are you serious? Where's your faith at? Where's this boy at? Bring him to me. And in verse 18, he ordered the afflicting demon out and it was gone. From that moment, the boy was well. From that moment, the boy was healed, delivered, set free. And I say this because church tonight, God has moments. We need to take advantage of the moments that we have right now. We have Jesus here with us right now in the spirit. He's here right now. And how many of us as God's people take advantage of it? Because all it takes is a moment. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I am tired seeing people, even myself. I put myself in this. I'm tired of myself not taking advantage of all that God is. All the strength that God has. And tonight, church, he is, there is momentum. And He is trying to push us. He is trying to provide us with strength, with a force, amen, so that we can move and get into motion and accomplish the great for Him. But it's going to come in these moments, like this church, that you and I need to take advantage of His power, of His name, of who He is. How many of us have let moments pass us by throughout your life? How many of us have had moments that you've passed by? Moments where you could have made a different choice. Moments where you should have did something else and you didn't. And it changed the destiny of your life. It changed the course of your life. Anybody in here? Moments that you knew you shouldn't have made that choice. If only you would have did something else, your life could be different. You and I can't afford to pass by the moments that God has given you and I. Yeah. And then somebody's getting it tonight. I say this because there are moment killers. Momentum killers. There's doubt. There's selfishness that's alive in this church. Maybe alive in your heart right now. Doubt, selfishness, giving. Giving stops momentum. As you and I as a church stop giving, it stops what God's trying to do. Pride. Pride is a huge thing. Pride will kill you. Pride will stop you. Pride has you stuck right now. Strife. Sin. Attitudes. Gossip. Backbiting. Anger issues. Lack of unity. No faith. Lukewarm people. Self-centered people. Joyless people. You see, do you ever see joyless people or is it just me? They have Jesus living within them and they have no joy. Something's wrong. Self-centered. Did I say that? Yeah. Joyless. Inconsistent people. Inconsistent Christians that they're excited one day, the next day they're not excited. One day they want to worship God, the next service they don't want to worship God. One day they're ready to pray down uh, heaven, the next day they don't care about prayer. One day they're in love with the Word of God and then the next day they could care less about the Word of God. They think they know it all. Inconsistent Christians. Christians that are up one day and then down the next. Fired up one day and then all cool down the next. Alive in Christ and then next day dead in Christ. Inconsistent Christians. Fault-finding critics. Do we know people like that? Fault-finding critics. It's a lot of critics. In the house of God. Critics. Those that are just lo looking for faults. Oh, zoom in on that fault. Where I have faults. You and I all have faults. Who are you? Amen. So just zoom in on one person's fault. And man, look at them. Fault finding critics. Man, I just want to criticize my brother all day long. I want to criticize my leader all day long. I want to criticize my sister all day long. Ugh, did you see her? What the heck's his problem? Who does he think he is? Rise up all crazy and people want to be fighting each other. Fault fighting critics. I do not want to be a fault finding critic. I have no time to be a critic. I need to criticize myself. I need to criticize my salvation. And the word of God says, worry about your salvation. Stop worrying about everybody else and stop trying to zoom in on other people. Why don't you zoom in on your own heart? Amen. Jealousy. How many jealous people we have in here? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> that was a trick question. 
Jealousy is ugly. God, help us if we have a jealous spirit in this place. We need a jealous spirit. I'm talking about your brother, about your sister. You're jealous. You begin to think crazy thoughts about him. Who does Mike you think he is? Can't stand him. Thinks he's all saved and everything. Can't stand him. We're being real here tonight, church. Come on. And I know I left off quite, quite a bit. I know I left off probably a whole bunch of other momentum killers. And that's what we get in part, a part of the service now. Anyone else? Name a momentum killer right now. Somebody just raise your hand, yell it out. Name a momentum killer that can stop God from moving. Fear. Bitterness. Hatred. Hatred. Greed. Anybody else? Come on, church. What are momentum killers? What's killing your momentum tonight? You don't have to raise your hand. That's not mean to you. Don't say it. But what do you see, church? Worry. Selfishness. Anyone else? Lust. What's a momentum killer in your home tonight? What's stopping the joy? Unforgiveness. Anything else? Disobedience. Crazy momentum killer is disobedience when you don't listen to God. God just stops. All right, I'll wait on you. Anybody else? What's a momentum killer? When God's trying to do something great in this church and there's something alive in somebody's heart, in their spirit. Did we pretty much cover it all? It's a pretty wide area, right? There's a lot of stuff on there. The next thing I ask, how many of us have momentum killers alive in our hearts tonight? Alive in our spirits tonight? If you're saying not me, there's probably pride inside of you right now. Not me, heck no, I'm good. Wow, kill the pride. You and I all have certain things that are up there that are trying to come in and trying to kill your momentum. Trying to kill what God's trying to do in your life. Well, heck no, I'm perfect. Wow. There we go with the self-centeredness. I don't need nobody. I know it all already. I don't need nobody to tell me nothing. You get angry when you maybe you get even disciplined. I've been rebuked, I've been corrected by my pastors many times, but I know it was for love. I know they had the best interest for me, for my life. But there may be some in here, I don't care about that. I don't care about accountability. I don't care about being accountable to my leaders. I could care less who they think they are. They're trying to run my life. How many of you guys know tonight, uh, if you look in Romans chapter 7, verse 21, in the message Bible, it says, It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. Every single time. It's predictable, church. In our lives, look at what God's Word is saying. The moment, we're talking about the moments, church. The moments that you and I take advantage of. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. Those things are there to trip your momentum up, trip what God's trying to do and kill you and stop you. The moment you decide to do good, the moment I decide to serve God, sin is there to trip me up. You and I need to understand this, that the moment you and I decide to rise up and be a voice, the moment you and I decide to ride the momentum, the moment you and I decide to say, God, give us the strength. Be our force, God, that we would be propelled, that we would be pushed into your direction, God, that we would accomplish great things. Understand that the moment that you make that choice to rise up, to be passionate, to be sold out, to be radical for Jesus, that sin is going to be there to trip you up. It's going to be there the moment you decide to want to do something for God. And these are momentum killers. And as I close tonight, Romans chapter 7, verse 21, like I said, it is predictable. Some of you guys know what I mean tonight. You try to do good, right? You try to get right with God. And it's almost predictable because you already know, man, I know that I'm trying to get right with God. I'm trying to do good. I know that I'm just going to mess up. It's really predictable in your life because it's a repeating thing. You do good. The enemy trips you. It stops you. Closes your mouth.